Okay, so here we have a pretty typical problem where you are given a bunch of different reactions and you're given the delta H for uh, each of the reactions that you can choose from. And it says calculate the lattice enthalpy for the formation of barium bromide. And the lattice enthalpy reaction is given at the bottom, barium two plus ion in the gas phase plus two bromide ions in the gas phase combine to give you the barium bromide crystal lattice and that's a solid and what we know want to know is what is the lattice enthalpy or what is the delta H for that reaction now actually we can start wherever we like but usually what I'll do is scan all the reactions that are given I'm looking around and what I'm looking for is BA2 plus gas because that's the first thing given in the goal reaction. So what I'm gonna do is flip that IE2 reaction, that's the second ionization energy for barium, um, where the um, barium one plus ion is giving up one electron to become a barium two plus ion. And the delta H is positive for the ionization energy, but since I flipped that reaction so that the Ba2 plus is on the reactant side, I have to change the sign of the ionization energy from positive to negative. Now, since I have generated a Ba plus one ion as a product, and I know that Ba plus one does not appear in my goal reaction, I have to use the first ionization energy to get rid of that barium plus one ion because I can't have that in my goal reaction. Again, I had to flip that reaction, so I had to change the sign of the uh, delta H for that reaction, for the ionization energy. Now I've generated a Ba gas intermediate that is not appearing in the final reaction, so I'm gonna try and get rid of that. So what I'm gonna use is the enthalpy of sublimation. Sublimation is the process of going from a solid directly to a gas. Um, but in this case, my BA gas was on the product side and I need to cancel that out. So I'm gonna flip that reaction as well and put the BA gas on the reactant side and put the BA solid on the product side. And since I reversed the reaction or flipped it, what I'm gonna do is also change the sign of the delta H. So normally it requires energy, that's why delta H of sublimation is a positive value but since I'm flipping it in the reverse direction, it's gonna release energy, and that's why the delta H is a negative 175 kilojoules. Okay, now I'm kind of done with the barium, and uh, the next thing I have to work on is the bromine. So what I'm looking for is two bromide ions in the gas phase, so I'm gonna go ahead and work with my uh, bromide ion here. And you see that in the uh, goal reaction, I'm looking for two bromide ions. And the e, uh, electron affinity reaction given in the problem, uh, there's only one bromide ion there. So what I'm gonna actually do is take everything in the reaction and multiply it by two. So that includes the uh, two electrons and the two bromine atoms in the gas phase. So I'm gonna put a two coefficient here and put a two coefficient here. And then I also have to multiply the delta H for the reaction by two. And again, since I reverse the direction of this reaction, not only am I multiplying it by two, but I've changed the sign from negative 325 to positive 325 kilojoules. All right, now I've generated a bromine in the gas phase atom which does not appear in the goal reaction. So I have to get rid of that bromine gas phase atom. So what I'm gonna use is, this is called the bond enthalpy, or also called the bond dissociation energy, which is taking a bromine diatomic molecule, Br2, and breaking that covalent bond, forming two bromine individual atoms. And what, I, what you can see is that in order to cancel the two bromine atoms, I have to uh, flip that reaction so that the two bromine atoms are now reactants. And the bromine gas, Br2, is a product. So I've changed the sign of the delta H of the bond enthalpy from 193 to negative 193. 
And then last, the only reaction I haven't used yet is the enthalpy of formation, or delta H sub F. And that reaction, as it turns out, is gonna help me cancel out my Br2. So I have Br2 plus Ba solid forming BABr2 solid. And that's a formation of BABr2 solid. And I don't have to flip that because that's gonna give me my BABr2 that I'm looking for in my goal reaction as a product. Now Hess's law says that once all of these reactions can be added up to give you your goal reaction, so here you can see in the first step, um, actually this is not the important thing, uh, where am I? I'm going down to Br2 minus those two bromide ions in the gas phase are what I need for my goal reaction. So that's going to have to stay. And the next thing is the Ba2 plus ion in the gas phase. That's going to have to stay. And then my product of my goal reaction is BABr2 solid. So that one's also going to have to stay here. It's produced in the first step. And then what we're going to find out really quickly here is that everything else that does not appear in the goal reaction must cancel out. Otherwise, I've done something wrong here. And what I try to do to make this a little bit easier is just line up uh, all of my arrows of all the different steps so that if something appears on the reactant side and the product side, then I can go ahead and cross it off. So now what I'm going to do is just start crossing stuff off. So Br2, and I've forgotten to label this Br2 gas, so I'm going to go ahead and go back and write my state of matter. It is important that you keep all the states of matter straightened out because um, you're going to find that, like for example with the sublimation, you're going from a solid to a gas or something like that. So you can't just cancel out um, things that don't match. So this is Br2 gas, cancels with Br2 gas. We have Ba solid canceling with Ba solid over here. We have two Br gas canceling with two Br gas. We have two electrons canceling with two electrons. We have barium gas canceling with barium gas and a barium plus one ion canceling with a barium plus one ion. So this is great. All the intermediates and things that don't appear in the goal reaction have canceled out. So uh, if that's true, if, if that's true, if I can add the reactions to give me the goal reaction, then I can add the delta H's for each individual step to give me the overall delta H. And that is one way of stating Hess's law, which is um, that enthalpy is a state function, and state functions are path independent, and path independent means that it can take place in one step or in a series of steps, and uh, it doesn't matter how you go about the process as long as you arrive at the destination, which is, in this case, the delta H for the overall goal reaction. So you wanna be very careful of not making any sign errors in this case, uh, be very careful with your positive and negative signs as you're typing that into the calculator. For me, it's just easier to use the negative sign uh, in front of each number that's negative and then add, 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 add them all together. And what I found is uh, 1,950 kilojoules per mole of energy are released when the barium bromide is formed from its gaseous ions and this is typical of the strength of ionic bonds.